You're watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte, truth with the power to live it. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, since we're on the subject of going, this is the last service that Sister Brianna is going to be with us. She is, well, not forever, but uh, for a while. She is going to uh, work and study in Japan. And so at the conclusion of the service today, we're going to have some special prayer for her. But we love her. She's super talented, very classy individual. And I think God has great things for her as long as she keeps doing what I say. <laughs> and we love you. Amen. Uh, I, I am at that, that stage of life, which some of you will laugh when I say, but I'm at that stage of life where... Uh, so many people, I had them classified, you know, as young people, teenagers, and they're, they're not young people anymore. They're, they're, they're adults, and uh, they're, they're moving forward in their lives, and uh, the Lord's beginning to, to open doors for them. Uh, I don't have a long message tonight. Uh, I'll save that for later on. Uh, I just have something I want to share with you. I read to you from the words of the, the, the Apostle John writing to his friend, and you might even say uh, someone who he had been a spiritual father to, who grew up in the house of God, grew up in the work of God, and then began to be a leader himself and began to uh, preach, teach, and influence himself. Uh, Gaius initially... Uh, he, he came up through the church. He, he was, he was a, to be discipled, as all are discipled. Uh, he grew in understanding. And, and when John writes this epistle to him, this little, little, almost a note that he sends to this individual, um, he starts out by, by saying this, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospered. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Uh, we, we read this passage, and it has uh, insight to us in, on many levels. But uh, what's amazing to me is the fact that Paul speaks about success for his uh, friend uh, Gaius, not just in a spiritual sense, but he says this to him, uh, I, I pray that you would prosper and that you would be in good health just as your soul prospers. Now, let me take you to another place in the Scripture where the Scripture tells us of a time in the children of Israel's story where they had come to the promised land they had sent spies to see whether or not uh, how they should go about possessing this land. And the, the consensus of those who had been sent, there were 12 spies, 10 of them came back with a evil, not a negative, an evil. The difference between negative and evil in this context is if God says you can do it, it doesn't matter what you think you can do. You guys understand what I just said. If God says you can do it, it doesn't matter what you think you can do. It's not about how you feel. It's about where you stand. And many of the mistakes we make is we put feelings on promises that we should be standing on. I stand on the promises of God. I don't feel like I can do this, but I stand on the promises of God. This is not a small thing just to be encouraged by for a moment and think about it. This is something to, to begin to live your life by. If God said you could do something, you can do it. How you feel about it becomes secondary. Ten of these spies came back and they delivered an evil report. Why? They're, and when it came to this, it didn't matter what they felt. It mattered where they stood. They should have stood on the promises of God. They came back and they said, we don't think that we can do it. And of course, you know the story. Joshua and Caleb said, we are able to possess the land. Uh, this was great. There was great despair 
among the people. Uh, Caleb, Caleb tried to rally them back before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession. We are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, uh, saying the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature and we saw giants we are like grasshoppers to these individuals at this moment in their story it did not matter how they felt it only mattered where they stood when God says you can do something you can do it it is your job to cast out fear and let your confidence be strong in the promises of God and it would do us well before we quit an endeavor to ask ourselves whether or not God said we could do it. Because so often we live our life on the basis of the return feeling within us. We try, there is trouble. It must not be the will of God. Find me an individual in the scripture who didn't have trouble, and I'll agree with you. You start something and you go until you feel a little discouraged. And you say, it must not be the will of God. Find me somebody who is in the scripture who didn't have discouragement, and I'll agree with you. What if doors are closed in our face? And in my personal testimony, there has never been, never been anything that the Lord told me to do or directed me toward that there were not doors I had to fight my way through. Stay with me. What you should look for if you want to know whether or not to do something is rather than looking at trouble in this life, you will have tribulation. Rather than looking at discouragement, guess what? You will get discouraged. Rather than looking at uh, difficulties, you should look for signs that God alone could have given you. And then you know it's not for you to do because it's signs that the Lord has given you. It is evidences. It is a specific manner of communication between God and your life. But if it's just trouble, you should fight through your trouble. Can I have a big amen? If you're just tired, you should rest up and go back to work. Can I have an amen? If you're just, ex if you're just somehow discouraged, you ought to get encouraged in Jesus name and do what God said you could do. What's amazing to me about this story is that God would not give them the land without them being a participant in its possession. God would not, he, he took care of Pharaoh for them. They had nothing to do. He took care of many troubles for them like starvation in the wilderness. They had nothing to do. He took care of them in a mighty way with, with an attack on the, those who owned them in slavery, the Egyptian empire. He opened doors. He he did all, but when it came to a place of possession, a place where they were to live, it was up to them to do what God had said he could do. And so you, or God said they could do. You ask yourself, could God have done the work for them? Yes, he just wouldn't. Could God have delivered those cities to their hand? Yes, he just wouldn't do it. Could God have ran the inhabitants out? Yes, he just wouldn't do it. Because there comes a point where you are not just receiving of God's work, but you are a testimony of his promises. And the difference between where you are and where you will be a, f a living fulfillment of God's promises or whether, is whether or not you had a hand in what happened. It's as though God will do some things for you, but he won't do everything for you. God will open some doors for you, but he will make sure you know how to knock on the door. It's not enough for a principle to be given uh, 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 such as, you know, knock and ye and, and, and someone will answer to you. Ask and you, you shall receive. It's not enough for that principle to be placed in some type of a, um, a, a spiritual zone that we reach up and touch. Our lives has to be examples and testimonies of the promises of God in our life. You guys are wondering where I'm going. Well, I know where I'm going, so just give me a few more minutes. The point is this. At some juncture of your journey, your testimony is going to be more powerful than God's intervention. Not in a sense that you're more powerful than God. But if you are going to influence other people, you've got to have some victories. 
I find it amazing that the Lord would do all of this for them in the wilderness. But when it came time to claim the promised land, he said, no, you've got to do this. You've got to do it. And he lets them do it. Now, let's get back to this little short letter that we were talking about in in uh, the, the, the last epistle of John to his son in the faith, uh, Gaius. And he says, I, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. This is an interesting passage because we're very comfortable uh, encouraging one another spiritually. We're, we're very comfortable making sure people are, are strong in their spirit. We don't tend to worry too much about everything else. We don't. We want you to get prayed through, bless God. We want you to be spiritually on fire. We want you to come to the house of God. But let me tell you something. Your testimony is not just how high you jump on Sunday night. Your testimony includes everything else. Not running the aisles. It's okay. I knew tonight it wouldn't be an aisle running night unless the youth did it for me. Your testimony is not just how loud you shout. It's everything else. And so here is a young leader in the church, and Paul is saying, look, it's obvious that your soul is prospering. It's obviously that it's obvious that spiritually you're doing great things. But my prayer for you is that you would prosper in the same manner your spirit is prosper. You would prosper in everything else. It is the will of God that the life his people live is a testament to the principles and the promises of the word of God. I have known a few people who the only part of their life they really had together was their zeal for the Lord. Everything else was kind of a, 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 a walking disaster. But when it came to the house of God, they had zeal. They were, they were prayed through. They were in the first in the altar and the last to leave. That is fine if that's the best you can do. If that's all you've got, I would rather your soul be right with God than anything else. And I think that is the standard, standard position of, of any church that ha makes any sense. If, if, you're gonna, if you can only get one thing right, let it be your soul that you get right because that's eternity. Amen. Amen. But if you want to be a leader, what John is looking for is leadership out of this young man. What John is looking for is someone who can influence others. Someone who is not always running from one disaster to the next crisis. But their life becomes a testimony of the promises of God and the principles of the scripture. And he's saying, I'm praying that you would have the same prosperity you're having in your spirit. I pray you would have that in and everything else. And this is what I know about the scripture. If you will let the scripture apply to you, if you will let the principles and promises of the scripture get down where you're living, it will affect everything in your life. It will make you a better husband. Can all the husbands say amen? Most of us need to be better husbands. I might need to preach on this for a little while. If you'll let the promises of God and more importantly the, the fruit of the spirit begin to work in your life, you'll be a better husband. It, it'll make you a better father. Father, can all the fathers say amen? It'll make you a better mother. Can all the mothers say amen? It'll make you a better wife. Can all the wives say amen? amen. It'll make you better on your job if you'll let the work of God begin to work in your life. And God forbid we come in the house of the Lord and we dance all over the house and shout like it's 1999, but we go and we're a terrible employee and a terrible witness out in the world. God forbid. You can get away with that if all you care about is you. But Gaius, if you're going to have influence in the church, and we need leaders, we need people who are testimonies. If you're going to minister because you're known among people, uh, as the scripture says, know them that labor among you. If you're going to have leadership, it's not enough to simply have one part of your life together. You need to be led of God, blessed of God in everything else also. 
Paul will point out the kind of leaders who cause trouble. Verse number nine, I wrote to the church, but die by Trophanes, uh, but Diotrophenes, who loves to have preeminence among them, does not receive the us. Some scholars think that this is a lost uh, epistle that John wrote to the church, but it was killed by one church leader who was jealous of John's uh, preeminence. He wrote, but it was not received, and one church leader, Diotrophes, uh, 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 actually some way uh, put the kibosh on it, so to speak. Uh, and he says, therefore, therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, pratting against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. Here's a church leader who was working out his own need for therapy on the church. Here's an individual who cannot get along with his peers. He has no fellowship with brethren, and he has problem honoring anybody but himself. He loves to be in charge of something, but if anybody else gets any honor, he sees it as a personal threat, not a blessing to the people. And he's an individual who single-handedly took whatever letter that John wrote in ministry to the church. He took that, and, and, and he, 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 he got rid of it because he wanted to be the only voice. An individual flawed who, although he can sing and dance and have all the stuff that people in a congregation would think would qualify him, when it comes to everything else, his ability to have relationships, his ability to, to, to be a witness in all the venues of life, he is an utter failure. And so John writes to his son in the face, Gaius, Gaius and says, look, look, it's not enough for you just to run on Sunday night. You need to have victory in everything else in your life. As a church, I confess to you that we put most of our focus on the spiritual challenge that is before us because it is a challenge to be spiritual people. Can I have an amen? It is a challenge, and we have particularly in the last few weeks made a renewed commitment to prayer individually, and I, as I have talked to, uh, talked to you about every Sunday for going on seven weeks now, uh, and I pray you are doing that. It is a challenge, and usually uh, the spiritual man uh, is what gets the first uh, bad treatment in our lives. We'll take care of everything else and we'll put that spiritual man or that spiritual woman within a, a within a kind of last. And so as a church, I confess, we spend most of our time, we spend most of our focus keeping people prayed through, keeping people spiritual, keeping people on fire for God, their zeal strong. But hear me, if you're going to have influence beyond yourself, it's not enough just to have that part of your life kind of in control. You need to work on everything everything else too. You need to learn how to be an encourager one to another. It's not all just about me. I've got to encourage someone else. I've got to learn how to not just not just act a role in the service, but when it comes outside the service, I've got to be a good father. I have to be a good husband. You see, if I just have a front here, I, I will hurt something that is necessary. My point is this, when it comes to everything else, we, if we're fulfilling the law of God and we're walking in the principles of the word, we should not be lurching from one crisis to another crisis. I know you're not excited. That's okay. It doesn't bother me a bit. I just preach longer. It should not be that way. In other words, some people are not diligent in their life with let's just say finances you spend all your money i'm coming on right down where you live you spent all your money going out to eat after church with your four friends and then something happens and you need a miracle from god Woo! that's how you kill a service right there Some of us, some of us abuse our health, won't exercise, haven't eaten anything healthy in 17 weeks, and when we get sick, we need a miracle. Now, I'm not saying 
that miracles aren't available to people who believe. And I'm not saying that I myself have not received financial blessing in my life that was from the Lord. My point is this. At some point, you don't get to stand back and let God do everything for you. But your daily choices become part of your testimony. We are trying as a church to help in, in many of these areas. We need to do a better job in some of the areas. We're starting a class, particularly in financial area. We're starting a class uh, this fall uh, that I've talked to you about several times to help people learn the skills, develop the support group, so to speak, and get the discipline to, to make these positive changes. But what God really needs, what God really needs from us is not someone always need who needs to be bailed out of their trouble. What God really needs is somebody whose life, not just in how excited they are on a Sunday night, but their life in everything is a testimony to the promises of God, the principles of the Scripture. Amen. Uh, there's uh, a lot here that I could get into in this epistle, but I won't do it tonight. I want to challenge every one of you in your prayer this week. I want to challenge you to look at your choices and, 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 and take the liberty to not simply segregate God into the spiritual parts of your life. But in everything you're involved in, why don't you see if the Lord doesn't have something to say about everything else? Because our ability to be a, a testimony in everything else is directly related to our ability to lead others to a better walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we want to be your people. Lord Jesus, we want your example to be before us. We want your instruction that's given to us in the Word of God. We want it to be powerful before us, Lord. We don't want to simply have kind of a, a, a zeal for the Lord and other parts of our life not be a testimony. But Lord, help us to make every part of our life a testimony of your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Why don't you step out of the pew you're standing in. Let's come toward the altar. Sister Brianna, I'd like you to come over here and stand in the middle right here. Yes. Hallelujah. I'd like some of you to gather in behind her. She's going to be in Japan for a year. We want the Lord to be with her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get in there close. Sister Elms, get in there close. Hallelujah. Would you extend your hand to her to her right now? Lord Jesus. Watching Apostolic Radio Charlotte. Truth with the power to live it.